Well, good morning, everybody. John Bergsman here from the Great Lakes Fisherman's Digest with Tim Long from Timbers Resort on beautiful Lake Gogebic in the western UP. And as you can see from our offshore board that had been marching like a little soldier in a row, it's fallen back. We're here for some lake trolling here on Lake Gogebic. Stay tuned, you're gonna like this show. Wait. Jack your speed and go up there, Tim. Don't worry about me. I'll adjust with my reeling in. We've come up on a structure right when we get a bite, which is not the optimum thing to do, but... You still got him? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm a tournament fisherman. We there? Oh yeah. I'm slow. I'm okay, slow yeah, you, you're adjusting to me. I'm adjusting to the circumstance. Nice fish. Real that. nice. Now that's what we're searching for. And nice release right at the net. Oh my goodness. That I'll get the boat under control. Let me show you this. Like our entire fishing trip, we're under massive cold front conditions, but this is exactly what we came for. Beautiful. Lake Ogebic Walleye. We're here in the western basin of the Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Out here today with Tim Long, like we said, and uh, we've made a long pass. We're under severe cold front. It's been this way with east winds for what, three, four days now, Tim? Five days Five at least. Five days in a row. But what we think and what we're going to work on all day long is just simple crankbait presentations that can cover a lot of water. And we're running little number. Uh, Number five. Number five, Berkeley flicker shads and fours are good too. And we're gonna keep a few of these. We encourage everybody when they come to this lake to go ahead and keep some smaller fish, but to practice selective harvest, to release those bigger fish. This is a sensitive fishery. We got a lot of clicking going on, but that's because I got a fish before I could even set my stuff up. I mean, that didn't take long. No, nice. <laughs> Well, we got in the right depth. Boy, and did you see that board barely went back? I, I mean, know. I want to stay in that seven to eight feet of water. Yeah. That's where the weed growth is just starting to come up. Back up just. Oh, it's a big perch. Whoa, guys, you're going to want to see this perch. <laughs> There's your Lake Ogebic perch. Wow. Nice. <laughs> I'm nice. actually glad we caught one of these to show to people. Beautiful. This is exactly what Lake Gogebic for years has been known for. Not just walleye, right, Tim? Absolutely. These perch. Well, explain what 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 are they? What makes them so big here? You know, I don't know exactly what that is, but they they feed on wigglers, and this lake is just full of wigglers. 
Beautiful, but we'll take these perch all day long. Yeah, absolutely. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Crestliner, forged with strength, defined by durability. Strike King Lures, tie one on. Mercury Marine, go boldly. That's a keeper, finally. Yeah, I'm gonna bring him over the top. I'm yeah, only yeah, 14 yeah. feet plenty. I believe we're maybe too deep. Hoist. Hoist. Nice <laughs> fish. Well, this was the uh, result of adjusting. What we're thinking is that the water here is behind, right? It's way behind. Yep, and so we're talking really cold water temperature. So we went to some black bottom, a bay with some scattered weeds, and Tim shortened it up. That was a flicker minnow, what, 14 14 back? feet behind the board. <laughs> and a keeper fish. And we had caught just nursery fish after nursery fish at the other spot, deeper. So we may be on to something. We're gonna keep on giving this a whirl. You know, when you fish here in the spring, one of the things you gotta pay attention to, which Tim's touched on, is shallow water, newly emergent weed. You know, that was, the, that was the key for today's segment in the spring, was being able to get up in that eight, nine, 10 foot of water to locate and find that newly growing weed and to try to find the weed that was a foot to two foot off the bottom. That was the best stuff. It had enough there to be able to hold the minnows and the, the perch and all the other species that are left from last year. And then the big predator fish, the bass and the walleye come in and feed on them. They really key in on these shallow growing weeds in the spring of the year. They're probably the best physical structure in the lake until the bigger weed beds grow up. So when you're trolling springtime, pay attention to when you're in that right depth of water, which on this lake in the spring, eight, nine, 10 foot of water, and you want a little bit of weed growth like we saw in our graph today. We got four, four walleye and a tremendous perch in there, so we're starting to put a little bit of a pattern in. Early season trolling can be a grind, but if you get in a good body of water and you get a good presentation and once you catch a few fish, it's really just about putting your time in. Here she comes, nice fish. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, beautiful fish. That's just a beautiful yeah. fish. So explain that regulation. Well, a couple of years ago, we were in a situation where I would be going out catching 100, 150 fish in a day, and only one would be of legal size. One to 10% of the fish in the system were of legal size at that time. We changed the legislation on November 6th that year which allowed us to keep two fish in that 13 to 15 inch range, and then the other three fish have to be over 15. Now what that did is it allowed the rest of those fish to have a better forage base, and they did grow in a very short period of time. Right. So now last year, I would say that 85% of all the walleyes that I caught last year were over 15. Beautiful. So, I mean, it's working. Right. And, and by taking some of the, by taking a number of the smaller, those ones that everybody goes, ah, oh, shoot, it's a yeah. half an inch short again. Right. Go ahead and keep a limited number of those so that you get them out of the system and there's more bait for the ones that are left. Correct. And it allows our tourism customer to come to Lake Ogibic and have a fish fry at the end of the week. Exactly. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, leaders in trolling technology. Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system.
Yeah. When you're fishing for midsummer walleye and an inland lake, Tim, any fish is a good fish because so many people struggle with this presentation. And oh yeah, he's getting heavy. Yeah, I know. He's trimming straight down, which is a good thing. 20. Yep. And this uh, this midsummer, yep, nice keeper fish. You know, what we're doing here this morning is, is we're just trying to establish a, a pattern for today. Tim last week bumped into some of these fish. We're late summer here in Gogebic. That's go time for these, for these uh, trolling walleyes. You know, they start to go as the water warms up and stabilizes and you kind of get some stability in the water for temperature. We're just running a simple crankbait pattern and uh, we got a little storm coming later this afternoon so we may take a break and come out tonight, but Tim, show that off. That is a beauty. And one of the dominant color patterns here today is this uh, purple flash, they call it. So you got the chrome, the purple back and an orange belly. And that's that's been uh, one of our better baits out here over the last week or so. And one of the things that we do, you know, we have our board set out there. When that fish hits, board starts to slide back, I like to spin the handles on that reel, get that rod tip loaded up, get that board loaded up in the water. Then I remove the rod from the rod holder keeping pressure on that fish at all times. If you get them in the corner of the mouth, they got just a thin layer of skin there. Kind of will, will rip that skin and put a pretty decent sized hole in there. So you have to maintain pressure on that fish to land that fish. Staying down, nice. Nice fish. Oh, now look at this. Now another gorgeous, gorgeous Gogebic walleye. And these are mud fish today because we're in the uh, later in the summer and, and these fish are now just suspending. And Chase, if you can show them the bottom, what we're looking for on our Lowrance is that right there. We've got fish just tight to the bottom and, and then you'll get these fish that rise up. We're catching the ones that are rising up, but you're looking for a bottom. See that right there? You're looking, that's basically the fish that's holding in neutral. But what you've got on that screen, and here's a great example right there, where that's a, that's a, a fish that we're able to catch. And uh, there's the fish that's feeding into that school. And when they rise up, that's when they become susceptible to us. We're running our baits maybe 13, 14 down today. Well, our system fishing segment uh, on this week's show has to do with pretty much everything. You know, when you're trolling, uh, you have to have pre-thought out how you're going to set your boat up in order to be effective. So we've got our Crestliner 2050 Authority, which is a great 21-foot platform for the Big Cottage Lake or the Great Lakes application. Of course, we got our Mercury 225, which reliably gets us to the spot in our kicker if we were using it. Today we're using our electric power, our Motor Guide XI-5, because we really want to zone in the speed. Now I'm using my foot throttle right here, uh, so because I got an infinite speed control and I want to hit that 1.7 to 1.8 right on the nose. That's what these fish are, are really being, being consistently caught at. The other part of our system is our Trax Tex trees. And our, of course, our equipment tool, this is a down rod, a dipsy rod holder that I'm using today uh, to be able to spread our lines out. Of course, our equipment holder and our offshore tackle inline trolling boards. That's the system fishing uh, that we're employing today. And that's pretty much the standard fare for anybody who does a lot of trolling. Now we're using the offshore boards to spread our, our lines wide. And then we're using the line counter reels to send them out to a different you know, 80, 90, 100, 110 to give us just a little bit of different depth dive so that we can really zero in on these fish. So our system fishing is employing all of the elements that you're gonna think about purchasing when you buy your boat. Not just the boat and the engine, but your electric trolling motor having that ability to take control of your boat and go at a precise speed. Your Lowrance graph with its mapping capabilities to be able to find the types of structure you're looking for, and also being able to see whether, hey, is there fish in this area or not? So system fishing, before you buy your boat, thinking about the equipment that you need to fish all the different ways 
that you like to fish will help you be have a better experience because you've thought out, what do I want? What size do I need? How do I fish? That's system fishing. One of the really cool things about Lake Ogiebic is that the light pressure that it gets uh, during the open water season. There's, you know, it's, it's the largest lake in the UP. It's 18 miles long, three miles wide, it's widest point. We're out here, it's 14,000 acres, we're out here. And, and granted, uh, a large lake like this can suck up a lot of boats, but there is nobody out here. Here on Lake Ogiebic, uh, we have seven different uh, resorts on the lake and they're all a little different and unique in their own way. Uh, the Timbers Resort is, uh, is a, it's a hunting and fishing resort. Uh, we really cater to the sportsmen. Uh, we don't have a bar or restaurant on the property uh, but we do have a couple community bonfires, one down by the lake, one up towards uh, the cabins and it's just a really mellow, homey feeling that you get at the Timbers Resort. What do you know? Oh, beautiful, Tim. I tell you what, if we could film in the rain, we would, but uh, filming in the rain usually doesn't work too good. After this front passes through, it looks like only a couple hours on the radar yeah. and we'll be back out here tonight. One of the good things about staying on the lake at a, at a family owned resort like Timbers, boom, you get a little rain squall, it's not the end of the world. You pull your lines, you go in, you've got a beautiful little cabin there, you make yourself some food, a cup of coffee, rest up a little bit. When the rain quits, right back out on the water. I love that family resort for that reason. That, that lakeside resort is the ticket when it comes to staying on these fishing lakes where, where the primary thing that you're gonna do is fish. You can't beat a resort that's right on the water. Got him on. Outside board too, I think, maybe. No, that one's been hanging. Go ahead, Tim, you got him? Yeah, do you want to take this inside one? Nope, you take and, it. And oh, get, get it out, out of the way? You bet. There, there's some weight on this fish. I know. It, it might be, that. it might not be a walleye, it might be a, nor look at that. We'll take it. We'll take whatever. You know, one of the most important things that I do when I go to an area and shoot a show is I verify first that this is a legitimate world-class fishery that is going to make my viewers happy if they show up. You know, Lake Ogiebic in the western upper peninsula is a lake that has been an absolute fixture for fishermen in this region for decades. If you want to come to a lake and really expect just a really, really good ratio of game fish to junk fish, if you'll notice, and we didn't edit it out, we never caught one fish on this entire trip that I would call a junk fish. But this is a game fish lake. You're not gonna fight with sheephead and white bass and all the other stuff that sometimes you get when you go to a bigger body of water. Nice fish. <laughs> yes siree, baby. <laughs> Beautiful keeper walleye here on Lake Ogiebic. And, and on our spring, on our little spring segment earlier in the show, you know, we caught five really nice walleyes, same thing, nice yeah. keeper sized fish. So it really doesn't matter. It, you have to come to Gogebic when it works for you because there's always a pattern if you're flexible and you understand walleye fishing, there's always a pattern to put you on fish. Off to give another sportsman a fighting chance to have a good time. I love the serenity, Tim, of just being up here. Yeah. And catching walleyes on a gorgeous lake, on a beautiful night, being with friends. Another beauty. 
Look at this lake, Gogebic Eye. Yeah. yeah, what a way to end the night. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Tim? Uh -huh. I just said, I'll bet you that lure, wouldn't it be hysterical if that lure, <laughs> you know, if you're looking for an amazing place to come and fish, let's let this little girl go here. Right down. Lake Ogebic. It is, it is way in the western side of the, of the Upper Peninsula, almost basically to Wisconsin. It is 14,000 acres of paradise, Tim, right? Well, that's beautiful. I mean, I mean, smallmouth bass at Trophy times, smallmouth bass. really nice, underrated smallmouth bass fishery, a phenomenally consistent walleye fishery for just what you've seen today and tonight. Lake Gogebic, the Western Upper Peninsula, you've got to try it out. You've got to put it on your, li place of pl your list of places to come and experience this. We'll see you next week.